All right, what's going on, guys? I'm Bear DiGidio. We are back with another episode of the Jackson Podcast. I'm here with the one and only, the greatest co-host to ever do it, the biggest, the baddest, and the one and only, Rampage Jackson. What's up? What's up? And we got a very special guest today, one of the black zillions over here. You know what I'm saying? Vincente Luque, one of the OGs. He black? No, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm Zillian, I'm Brazilian. Are oh, you Brazilian? <laughs> back from the Black Zillions. Are oh, you? That's, yeah. that's why they created the name. Yeah. Why, why they create that name? So they would they was it, when we started it was Rashad Evans, like and a whole bunch of Brazilian guys, and and they say okay, it's gonna be Black Zillions. Anthony Johnson was there too, mm. and and they came up with the name. I think it was Danilo Villafort or one of them. Oh, for really? that name, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Black Black Zillions versus yeah. American Top Team, the Ultimate Fighter Show. I always yeah, yeah, thought yeah, that yeah. was the 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 Black Brazilians, like Anderson Silva and stuff like that. You know, like the yeah. the black people in Brazil. I didn't yeah. know it was. A, no, but he was in the team. Anderson Silva wasn't. He was wasn't. Black, but no. you know what I'm saying? I, th I thought yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like the Black Brazilians. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like <laughs> I think you know, it was because it said like whoever isn't isn't Brazilian was black, and then like was Brazil the black guys and the Brazilian guys. And everybody together just build the team. You know, black people and Brazilian people, we get along great though. And yeah. Because um, you know, even even when when I went to Brazil, uh, my for the first time, I was surprised at how many black folks was over there in Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. There, the thing is, like, the culture is really like everybody got together. You know, it's not like I don't know. You know, it's it's even different. Like when I came here, like the first times I came to train here, like I saw it was it was very different than Brazil. Cause in Brazil, like everybody's together, and we're not like oh, some guys. You know, here are the black guys, and here are the I don't know Latin guys. Yeah. Like there, everybody's together, and it's just like I don't know. It's not it's not different for us, you know. Yeah. So. That's why I think like everybody goes to Brazil and feels really good. Like yeah. the energy, like everybody's the same, and yeah. we we just like obviously there are like rich people, poor people, but right. that's that's the re the only difference. You yeah, know? right. Yeah. It's, it's it's about class, not about race. So, so if you ask a black guy in Brazil, like what are you? He will say I'm Brazilian. You ask yeah. a black guy in America, like what are you? I'm African American. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's yeah. totally yeah. it's a totally different. Yeah. Like they won't say I'm African Brazilian. Yeah, and that's and yeah. that's what I loved about Brazil. Yeah. That's what I liked about it when I was there. Because because sure. you were born, but you were born in uh, I was America, born in New, New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah, I was born in New Jersey. Uh, my mom is Brazilian. My dad is Chilean. Wow. And I moved to Brazil when I was six years old, and I grew up in Brazil. Wow. Is it true your mom's a black belt? Yeah, black belt and karate. Wow. Yeah. Is that how you got into mixed martial arts? That's how I got into fighting. Like, uh, I started training karate when I was about three or four years old. And I trained until I was 10. And But I didn't like, like, I liked it, but not that much, you know. I, I just, it was too much point fighting. And I don't know. I, I didn't enjoy it that much. So I stopped training karate. And then I, I played soccer and did a whole bunch of other sports. And when I was 15, that's when I got into uh, Muay Thai. Yeah. And there was like Vandalay Silva, Shogun, all these guys, like Vitor Belfort as well, like a big striker, all Brazilians. And I was like, man, I want to do this, you know? So let me start training Muay Thai. And a year later, I started jujitsu. And then at 17, my first pro MMA fight. Oh, you had a pro MMA fight at 17? Yeah, my wow. mom had to sign off. Oh, yeah. wow. And it was Vale Tudo rules. That's that's crazy because it was in 2009. So they still had in Brazil, they still had Vale Tudo rules in some fights. But wow, I just man. had one fight like that. You know, it, remember Marco Rujas? Yeah. In Laguna, yeah. Vale Tudo. <laughs> yeah, Vale Tudo. He's, yeah. he's king of the streets. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like, people don't understand what Vale Tudo is in America. They think no, it's no. like karate. It's not. It's like no, the original, it's crazy. like, yeah, yeah. they, yeah. they smash people's faces open in Valley Tudo. Yeah, it's like no. fight till the death. It's like, it's yeah. translated like no rules, right? Yeah, it's basically like real basic rules, like don't pull the hair, no eye gouging, you no know, hit to the nuts, and that's it, that's you know, it. everything else. Like, you can fish when, hook, you can fish hook and... No, you can't fish, <laughs> no, you can't fish hook, but like stomps to the ground, everything, and like, I remember when, when we were there, like, they were explaining the rules, and then they explained the elbows. Oh, and yeah. then like the guy was like, you can elbow any way you want. And even if you want to throw elbows to the spine, you could do it. Jeez. I don't care. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. I took my own gloves because they're like, we, they didn't offer gloves in this first fight. So I took my own gloves. And, and it's funny because I say it's a pro fight and it was a pro fight. You know, it's in my record, but I got paid 50 reais for that. Well, and that's probably that? like, Nowadays, that would be $10. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yo, oh. <laughs> yo, that's that's a nice yeah. that's a nice yeah. check. Yeah. yeah, I bought myself a burger after. Yeah. That. <laughs> Did you win that's the fight? It. Yeah, I won the fight. Yeah. I won the fight. You've, yeah. You've, what, kind of, what kind of burger was it? Tell me about this burger because I'm on a strict diet. I want to hear about this. Yeah. What, what, what this this burger that you fought for? What's Man, that that was like in Brazil. There's this place I really in, in my city. Uh, it's Sky's Burger. And it's a burger that you you got everything in there, so it's like a big uh, grill. They they grill everything, so you put the burger, eggs, cheese, uh, and a whole bunch of things like a sausage, bacon, everything. You wow, just make like, a burger out of everything. That sounds like a good. You you yeah, put yeah, egg yeah, on yeah. the burger, man. You know, you, yeah, you know, you win it. <laughs> egg, yeah. Eggs on burger and eggs on fried rice. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. are my favorite oh, too. Yeah. That's oh, it. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really like eggs. You yeah. like eggs? Yeah, yeah, I eat eggs every day. What do you eat every day? I never see you eat anymore. You still fasting? Yeah, I still fast. Man, it sucks. Um, Why you say it like that? Because I hate it, bro. Yeah, but you look lean. No, I I, I gained a lot of weight during my vacation. What were you? No, I didn't. Weigh, I don't weigh myself. I could look in the mirror and tell. Oh, I don't want to weigh. I don't. What do you? Weigh what myself. do you walk around at? What weight? So I try to keep myself at one ninety five. Jesus. Yeah. Hey, Back in the day, like maybe two or three years ago, I was. I was going over 200, and that's just too much. Wow. What'd you fight at? 170. Oh, that's yeah. not bad. 190. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah 195, I feel really good to train yeah. and just, like, not be far from my... One thing, I wanted to, one thing I wanted to jump into off the break is a lot of people don't know the relationship between you, the Black Zillions, Kill Cliff, you know, Sam Ford. It was the, it's, a, it's a lot of mix-up with gyms here and um, a lot of different energy, but you actually came up with Usman. Usman was on the ultimate fighter with you, right? Yeah. Um, that was when you had, it was the black zillions versus top team, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So that was, that was 2015. Yeah. And it was me, Usman, uh, Jason Jackson, and you know, a whole bunch of other guys that, that weren't at the black zillions at that time. Gilbert wasn't, wasn't in the ultimate fighter, but he was in the UFC already. So Gilbert also was like, uh, during the fights, because we had the fights in the gyms. If you go back and watch that, it's it's different than any other Ultimate Fighter because you had like all the fighters and the whole gyms like ATT and Black Zillions, everybody around the cage. It looks like a like a street fighter or illegal, <laughs> whatever you know. And, and it was really really fun. And Gilbert was there, you know, giving me instructions. That's back in 2014, 2015. That's when we really built our relationship. You know, we became brothers and. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a, a great experience. And the team right now, Kill Cliff, is basically like a lot of the guys from back in the days in, at Black Zillions. So the coaches like Henry Hooft and Greg Jones Amazing. and also Corey, uh, the strength and conditioning coach, they all were from that, from, from Black, Zillions, Black Zillions. And then it just changed names and, and, and changed the facility. So we went to Combat Club. After that, Hard Knocks. After that, Sanford. And now it's Kill Cliff. So... And Just Kill, Kill Cliff's the energy drink. Yeah, Kill Cliff's the energy drink. But it sponsors then, the gym, and the gym yeah. ran by Henry. Yeah. Cool. cool. And that was, so the gym is Kill Cliff Fight Club. Got it. Yeah. That's pretty crazy, right? Because Henry has, like, a ton of fighters in there, right? You have Gilbert, you have you, you have Usman. I mean, just to name those guys alone is a yeah, great gym, yeah. not to mention the other 90 fighters they got. Yeah. So it's like yeah. a whole business model. But, but Kill Cliff is Black Zillions. Yeah. It, well, Black I mean, Zillions no, turned yeah. into it because Henry yeah, was at Black like, Zillions. The, many of the fighters and the coaches are the same since Black Zillions, mm. but like it's it's owned by different people, you know. Uh, and it was formerly Sanford. It's Henry's gym now. Yeah, it was uh, San, Luke Rockold was there when it was Sanford. I watched yeah, him in yeah, there all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Who, who owned the gym when it was Black Zillions? You remember? It was Glenn Robinson. He was my manager back in the days, but he unfortunately passed away. But he was a great guy. Uh, but he owned the gym. Yeah. How he you passed away? Don't mind me asking. I, it was cancer, but I'm not sure like uh, what kind of it. It was. Was yeah. he a fighter too? No, no, no. He was a businessman. Uh, yeah, but he really loved fighting. He trained as a hobby. Yeah. What was the energy like? Because at Black Zillions, originally you had Vitor Belfort who brought in Gilbert Burns, right? Who who yeah. wanted Gilbert Burns to help him with training, with jujitsu, and that was kind of his team. And then Gilbert, you know, stepped right in the ring and became a UFC fighter. So you have a lot of history there. You have Usman, you have these American top team fights, right? You have the, the ultimate fighter. Like, there's a lot of history with Black Zillions. Explain to me the dynamic. Like, were you friends with Vitor? Were you friends with Usman? Did you guys all kind of 
train with each other or is it just it happened to be all of you guys are in the same gym at the same time I mean, uh, we're all our friends now, you know, so I definitely like have a great time with Usman whenever he's there and even outside of the gym, Vitor Belfort as well. And it's funny because Belfort is like one of the guys that inspired me to get into the sport. And now I'm, I hang out with him, you know, and, and he teaches me a lot of, of what he learned th during his career, but when it started like at the Black Zealands, everybody got there like through different routes, you know? Mm. So Vitor, I'm not sure how he got to the Black Zealands, but he was in Vegas before that and then moved to Florida and, and, and got in touch with the guys at the Black Zillions. I know that Usman came through Rashad Evans. So Rashad Evans brought him into the team and, and that's where when he started his uh, MMA career. And I was brought in by Guto Inocent. He used to, he fought in the UFC, he fought in Strike Force, and uh, most recently he he had a, a, a long, nice run in, in glory kickboxing and one FC. Mm. So Guto Inocent, he's from my city in Brasilia, in, in Brazil, Brasilia. And he called me back in, in the days and said, hey, this gym is really good. We're training. Uh, if you ever want to come here, you know, come train with us. You're invited. And at that time, I was fighting in Brazil. And Brazil is hard because, like, uh, everybody has the eyes on the U.S., you know. This is where the UFC is. This is where the the big shows are. And so everybody's watching the MMA scene here in the United States. In Brazil, like, everybody, we're, like, there are a whole bunch of killers. The fights are crazy. You know, that that league is so hard for you to get you really get, well, like, you know, undefeated fighters are really good. But nobody's watching that. So at the same time, like we have great fights that could be like fight of the nights in the UFC. Nobody in the US is really watching it. So I was like, man, I don't know. I, I got to go outside, you know, Brazil, go to the US and and train with somebody there. You know, I also I wanted to feel what was what was it like to train with guys that were in the UFC to see if I was ready for that, if I had what it took. And that's what why I went there in 2014 for the first time, you know, train outside of Brazil and train with Vitor Belfort, Tyron Spong, with a, a beast, Anthony Johnson. I actually was part of the training camps for Anthony Johnson. I don't remember what fight it was. And for uh, Tyron Spong, when Tyron fought against uh, Gokan Saki mm -hmm. in the, the Grand Prix. So, so it was, you know, that was really, really important for me because First of all, I realized that I had what it took, you know, to to be yeah. uh, fighting at this level. Obviously, I had to improve. I had to put in a lot of work, but but I could do it. And at the same time, that kind of gave me, you know, these guys saw me, the, the the coaches, the gym. They saw my my talents, my qualities. And after maybe six months, I had trained. I was already in Brazil. I got a call and they wanted me to be part of the ultimate fighter, you know, and if, and if I hadn't gone there and they hadn't seen me, maybe they wouldn't pick me, you know, they wouldn't have the eyes on me. So that was a, a big, important moment in my career. Yeah. The ultimate fighter, I feel like made a lot of people's careers. I mean, as coaches, as fighters, it's a, a pretty unique platform that the sport has. I don't think too many sports have something like that, right? Well, they got lucky with that damn uh, reality <laughs> show. They saved the whole UFC. Yeah, that's it, crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. What if the that show hadn't become popular? What what would MMA be now? I mean, guys would never have... I mean, people would have fallen in love with you and fallen in love with these fighters, but we as fight fans, me as a fight fan we fell in love with fighters through the ultimate fighter. Like you really got to see them. It's like watching a show. So it makes you fall in love with the characters. It really personalized the UFC. It made these guys athletes and famous. That's yeah. why I wish they would put more emphasis on it. Then we'd have more celebrities yeah. and stars. Yeah, I know. But what if Forrest and um, what's the, what's the other guy named? He, Stephen Bonner. Stephen Bonner. Bonner RIP. What if they didn't have that exciting fight? Ugh. And that's the only thing that saved the UFC. Yeah. That's the only thing to say. Like, that, who knows where it'd be? Who knows what MMA yeah. would be right yeah. now? You know. And what I think, like when when you look at those two guys, like Force and Stefan, like they look like they are like just regular guys. You know, there's nothing crazy about them. And I think that's what got people like into it because they're just regular guys. Yeah. But once they were inside that octagon, they were trying to kill each other. Yeah. Like, you know, to see how wild those guys could be. But at the same time, like. It's just a regular guy like that has, you know, uh, I don't know, that 
the day-to-day life. And that's what I think fans enjoy. You know, they they can see us as real people. And that's what the show does. And at the end of the day, that's that's what we are. Just, yeah. you know, we're good at fighting and that's why we fight, but we're still regular people. Yeah, but still to this day, I think Stephen Bunner won that fight. Yeah. I think I think <laughs> it was a, think a lot fight, of people, yeah. a lot of people would probably agree with that. Yeah. 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 What what can you uh go into without kind of saying too much? What can you go into on on Ian Gary? Like the internet loves talking oh, about man. this guy. <laughs> you trained with him for years, right? I mean, that was your training partner, I would say, for a yeah. good no, solid year. Ask him what you really want to ask him. I Have mean, you do, ever do, fucked do, his wife? No, oh my. <laughs> That's what he He's really wanted. Are oh, you married? I didn't know that. Bro. I'm married, man. You're gonna get him in trouble. I didn't, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, your yeah, your yeah. wife gonna watch this interview? Yes. Yeah, yeah, for yes, sure. For yes. sure, she's gonna watch. He did not. He did not. He didn't know. I didn't know. What's your wife? Okay, okay. What's your wife's name? I'm sorry. I apologize. Carol. 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 I'm sorry. I I didn't know that. He was married. You know, I'm I'm a little bit punch drunk and I can't remember. <laughs> He's like, right, that works. Up. He's I'm like, I married. just don't want to get killed. He's uh, like, damn, uh, dude, I should have never got coffee with that. All right, girl. let me rephrase the question. Did he and his wife ever try to fuck you? No. <laughs> no, no, no. And and man, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be honest, like in the sense Every time that I had, like every time every interaction I had with Ian, it was always really nice, man. I met him. Uh, when he was going to do his debut in UFC uh, in Madison Square Garden. And and I don't know, you, you know, he has, a, like, he has really good energy. He talks a lot. Sometimes that gets him in trouble, you know. I mean, talking a lot is, is fun sometimes, but sometimes you say the wrong things, and I think sometimes that's that's what, what he gets caught with. And, and also, like, when you talk too much, People are gonna talk about you, you know, yeah. and, and you kind of like you you give them that freedom, and that's what I think went on with this, you know. Uh, I bet he's a, I bet he's a good guy. I he's a good he's... guy. I mean, he's and and especially like uh, I've it's really like I think that I am I am just a chilled guy, you know. I, I treat everybody with respect, and that's why everybody treats me with respect as well, and that's why I never had a problem with him or with any other fighter, you know. And I just I just think that it wasn't. It was unfortunate, at least in my in my point of view, like how the whole thing, like when I, I, I looked at the fight, you know, and I thought it was going to be a crazy fight. I was so ready for that fight. I was so excited for that fight. I wanted to go in there and, and, and to just, you know, do it inside, like do what I had to do inside the outcome because at the end of the day, for me, that's what MMA is about. You know, outside, obviously, I know how it sells and how all the, you know, drama and all that, how that gets fans into it. I understand that. But I think, like, at the end of the day, the best part of all of it is going to be the fight. You know, that's going to be the best part. We're going to go in there and we're going to try to knock each other out. And me and him, we're we're really skilled. So it was, for me, like, crazy how I don't know if it affected him or not, all that went through. But to have the fight, you know, Wednesday, I was ready. And the fight was going to be on Saturday. And then Wednesday, they call me and, like, you're not going to fight. I was like... Mm. I can't believe, man. I can't believe. I don't know what it what what went down. I don't know, you know, if it was it had you to heard do about with that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He pulled out. He yeah, he pulled out, out yeah. but because I forgot yeah. why he pulled out. Yeah, I, think it, I think he had pneumonia. Oh, okay, That's yeah. not what it was. He you posted know? a photo of him asleep yeah. on the couch, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah but yeah, he, he yeah, had yeah. a lot of he had a lot of bad yeah. press about yeah, being yeah. a cock and stuff. But I still yeah. would have fought. I don't care yeah. about that because. But you trained for the fight. You prefer you prepared for the fight. Did did they offer you another fight? So they offered like. What what happened? They we try to make a fight with Kevin Holland Ooh, wow. for that for that same uh, date, but they didn't want to make it at one eighty. And Holland didn't like two days. How is gonna make one seventy? Right. He's a big guy. Right. Used used to fight at one eighty five. So right. I was willing to fight one eighty. They didn't want to make it. the UFC said it like there it. was no okay. sense. Yeah. And what they did offer me to re- reschedule for January, and with Ian, and. Or with Holland. And what I told him, like, man, I've taken so many short notices fights. I've taken even fights that I was like, I was ready to fight and they switched my opponent on the fight week. And I was like, you know, this time I can't because I I planned out. My family was going for holidays for, to Florida. All my family from Brazil flying up. And I had this plan over a year. Right. So like for the first time I was like, you, hey, guys. I'm going to have to step this one off, you know, and, and I, I don't know, I'll, I'll be ready in March. So let's aim for March. And if you guys want me, like whoever it is, whoever, one of those guys, you know, they are in the rankings. They are guys that have big names. I'll go there. I think it's fights that make sense, but let's do it in March. 
So that's why it wasn't rescheduled uh, for Bro, right you away. You don't know how yeah. bad that, that sucks to do a training camp and then right at the end of the training camp. I can't you know, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then you don't get paid. Like, like Oh, you don't get paid. If you don't no. step in the cage, you don't get yeah, paid, bro. Yeah, and that's yeah, and yeah. that's it costs money to do that training camp. Uh, it's like wearing tear on your yeah. body. That's why I want to yeah. get paid for like the fight. Yeah. I feel like okay, I, the fight I fight for free. Pay me for my training camp. Oh, that's yeah. true. So, but but like to be just fair, like they uh, I didn't get paid for the fight, but they did send me like uh you know uh, thank just you. take it yeah take care of my of my training camp and everything. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. We don't do get that? paid the per purse. No, no that's no. not a contract thing. Wow. So it's it's more cool. like yeah. like it depends on the fight. Rampage, they listening to you on the podcast. They take <laughs> care of fighters. Bro, they never did that shit. Rampage to me. takes it personally when fighters don't get taken yeah. care of. That's yeah. what I love about him. He's just looking out for you guys. Yeah. He don't mean it in a bad way. No, no, no. Yeah, because no fight fighter first because. You know, I've I've yeah. been fighting for years. Like even when I was fighting in, in Pride, like I just felt like they took advantage of me, yeah. me and, and other fighters. And all I ever wanted to do in this sport is just entertain the fans. You know, yeah. so I didn't care to be the best fighter on the planet. I just wanted to be the most entertaining, right? And I just felt like, why wouldn't you want to take care of a guy like this? Yeah, and, and for sure. That's 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 my boggle yeah. with it. When we look at uh, careers of guys around you that you train with, Usman left Killcliffe in 2020, 2021, something like that, comes back in 2022 to fight his first Leon Edwards fight. Were you a part of that camp at all? So uh, for the first Leon Edwards fight, no. Uh, not Neither of those. I wasn't, I wasn't part of that camp, no. Uh, I trained with him before he left Killcliffe, and then after he left Killcliffe, I trained – with him, like when he, for, for his training camps, he had them all at, at in Denver, mm. so I, I wasn't part of any of those. And but I I did train with him a lot, like previous to his last fight against Hamzat, because he was in Florida. He lives in Florida, so whenever yeah. he's there, he's training with us. Got it. And so for that fight, like it wasn't it was ten days notice, but he was training, so I was I was training with him. For the Hamza fight, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think if he had more training, he could have beat him? Definitely. Really? And if it, I think if it was, were five rounds, he could have beat him that night. Wow! Just because like he has the experience, and and even though he wasn't ready and he was like first fighting at one eighty five, I just you know when he wants to beat a guy, he's gonna beat a guy, and and I felt like he was he was getting you know better and better every round of that fight. And Hamza was on the opposite, was getting worse. And you think he has what it takes to come back and get a belt? I mean, I do think he has what it takes. The thing is, it's a lot of it, you know, uh, is your physical ability, like all the fights, all the years, that that's even mentally, you know, it's it's hard. And that's why I think he, he kind of like, at this moment, what I see him, like he trains to enjoy it again. You know, it's, it, it's not to... Sometimes we go crazy about our career and like, oh, I got to have all these fights and I got to train. And I got to do this and that. And then after so many years doing that, you forget why you started doing this for the first thing, you know, and, and it's for the love of the sport. You know, we love this. But if we lose, you know, if, if we don't have that love anymore, how can we compete like we used to? Mm. So I think that that's, that's kind of the process that is going on. Maybe with him and even with me uh, when – you know, maybe two years ago when I was just crazy about this and oh I'm gonna I'm gonna train, I'm gonna get all the fights I can, I'm gonna do everything. And I forgot about my family. I forgot about, you know, doing other things that I enjoy. And then I started like not enjoying fighting as well. But fighting is what I love. But I love it because I can enjoy it. I can do it like uh because of the love of it, not just because it's it's my job. You know, so it's it's hard. It's yeah. it's it's crazy. Cause well, you've been doing it for a long time, right? Your mom your mom got you into karate. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. Did yeah. you used to spar with her? Spar karate? I, I I didn't spar with her karate, but <laughs> like she that's that's a funny story because my mom after like many years, uh, she started training Muay Thai. Oh, like because I, I I was into Muay Thai and everything. I, I I'm black like I have black belt in Muay Thai, and and then she started training Muay Thai, and that's I don't know maybe maybe seven years ago, six years ago. And then she ha she went into like, uh, do the, when you do the belt change, like the mm. ceremony and everything, and we have fights, right? Mm. And then I sparred her. You sparred yeah, your mom yeah, in yeah, Muay Thai? And everybody was like, 
you crazy. Why are you hitting your mom like that? I don't know. I know she's tough. And I know that if I don't hit her, she's going to be mad at me because she wanted to be real. You know, she wanted like, I, I want to deserve this. So, so you I was really there. hitting your mom. Yeah, yeah, And you yeah, was kicking yeah. your mom. Now, yeah, she kicked yeah. your ass when you was little. No, huh? Yeah, yeah. She you was paying up. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> but she hit me in the, in the, in the, in the you sparring. You let her hit you. Well. No, I didn't let her. She, she got some good shots in. Stop. Yeah, but I hit her back. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, mom. It's, it's your mom. But, yo, but, that's your but mom. We training. We training in there. But that's your mom. How old is she <laughs> yeah. when she was sparring you? Forty something. And how old were you? Ah, uh, like twenty something. And you really were trying to put the hands on her. Yeah, but not for real. Like not not hurt her, but just make it real. You know, just for her to know that. But were people yeah. watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's everybody. Even worse. Oh, it's a gym. God. You, you are. A I want to see footage of this. Yeah, you, got, you have the footage. You got footage of this. You putting hands I don't on know, your mom. I don't know if I have videos. Uh, okay, now I we have no have. videos. Yeah, now we got next no time, videos. Yeah, next time you come back, I want to interview your but mom. But I have witnesses. You have witnesses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear his mom's side of this story. That's the craziest thing to have to spar <laughs> your mom in Muay Thai. She kick yeah. you in the head? No, she kicked me in the body. Yeah. yeah. Your dad? Do your dad do martial arts? No, he played rugby, which is. Like it's yeah. contact sports. No yeah, wonder yeah, yeah. you got that. Like you got that yeah. in you. My dad is Chilean, and he played rugby from 15 years old until 43 years old. Mm. And he was in the national team when he was young, when he was 18. Mm. And he played the World Cup in South Africa. Mm. So yeah, like both of them were athletes, like all their life. Oh, that's good. It was kind of like, and I I didn't like sports, and but it's kind of I couldn't run away from it. Mm. It was just in my blood. Yeah, we we look at one of the the scarier times in your career. You suffered a a, a brain bleeding. I don't have yeah. the yeah. the the exact name they categorized yeah. it as, but it was something during uh, your uh, your Neil fight, right? Yeah, Jeff Neil. Yeah, what, first what, time I was knocked out. In what my was life. it? So it was exactly what it like. It two brain bleeds. So I had one in the front lateral side of the brain and one in the back part of the brain. And what that is, is like when you get hit really hard in the head, your your brain bounces inside the skull. Wow. So you can have a concussion. With That's an injury that you cannot see. So it's inside. So you're going to have headaches and what whatnot. And a concussion, that I had a concussion. But the next step is like having a physical, like that you can actually see injury. So the back part of the 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 back part of the hand, the brain hit my skull right here. So that was like the, the first bleed. And then on the front side, you have like many, many parts of your brain. And then the outer layer of the brain has like this little uh, vessel, like mm -hmm. the little uh, veins, whatever. Because of this movement back, it kind of like uh, pulled on one of those veins and then it ripped. Mm -hmm. And then you had that bleeding. But that was like, what I had was the lightest that, that could have. Mm. Why? Because you had the bleeding and it, it sucks. I had crazy headaches and, and, and I felt for how dizzy long? Uh, for about two weeks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. But, but the thing is, like, it, the bad part could have been like, so I was two days in the, uh, I don't know how you call it, like UCI, ICU. 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 Yeah. At the ICU. And they wanted to, they were observing if the, if I was going to like have, uh, if the brain bleed was going to get bigger, was going to stay as it was, or was going to decrease. Wow. And the good thing is that it decreased and, and it recovered. If it got worse, then they would might like open my skull and things like that. No way. Yeah. That's, that's correct to ending. relieve pressure. That's correct. Ending. Yeah. That, that would, yeah. And I only found out, found that out like after a month because the first month was all recovery, you know, every, all the doctors focusing on, okay, you're going to, you know, Stay relaxed, stay in the dark, uh, not do anything, no screens, no nothing, just just relax. For a month? No, for, for the first two weeks. And then I was doing like hyperbaric chamber. Mm. And that's really good because they've tested that a lot on on like veterans that come back after explosions. And all that. They have much worse injuries in their brains than, than what I've had. And then they do these sessions with hyperbaric chamber and it's it enhances their recovery. Mm. So I did a lot of that. Wow. And then a month later, I did uh, a new brain scan. And the good thing is like there were... The, the doctor said, if I give this exam to another neurologist that doesn't know your history, he's going to say this is a normal brain. Mm -hmm. Like I had nothing, nothing, nothing. And then he told me like, you're blessed. You know, you're blessed because 
if if like we we didn't even know if you were gonna come back fighting with what you had. If you had to have like you know the opening your skull and everything, that would be it. Like you would never fight again. So like then I was I was suspended for six months. Uh, I didn't spar for six months. So just like physical training and 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 technical training, no sparring. And I then later they they told me that they wanted a whole year between me between my injury and me fighting again. That's why I, I only fought like I had the injury August 6, 2022, and I came back August 12, 2023 to fight RDA. And yeah, but I mean, considering the injury, I feel great. I thought the, the you know, the recovery was amazing. I was, I was I definitely, I say, like, like I said, after the fight against RDA, for me, that's, that was a miracle, you know, it was a miracle and, and I lived a miracle in my life. So it's amazing. That's why I praise God all the time and thank him for this. Yeah. Did it bother you mentally or or was it just a physical injury? I mean, uh, it did bother, bother mentally. I think it's before this, I had never been knocked down ever. I never been knocked down in training. I had never been knocked out in a fight. I've been knocked down two times in my career before this, one with Steven Thompson and one time with Barbarina. So this was like a big thing, you know, now I'm knocked out. And I have like this crazy uh, brain injury, you know. Yeah, it was a big shock so, to you. Huh? Yeah, and and the recovery and everything, like my family, man, that the, the support of the family, that's when you really realize, I mean, it's great, you know, to have the 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 support of the fans. You know, it's great to to be able to have you know a, a better uh, financial uh, condition, you know, stability and everything. But nothing beats family, you know. Man, when, when these nothing. things happen, that's when when you really you got a good see. you got a good family. I remember the first time I got knocked yeah. out, my family was making fun of me. <laughs> so I got when Vanille knocked me out. How? I was, maybe, I was maybe. hanging on the ropes. <laughs> How? My cousin, my cousin, my cousin. He stutters really bad. His name, his name, Dre Day. Where right? His name's what? Dre Day. He got shot in the head. He wait, was wait, young. Wait, wait. Oh, that's he why it. he was making fun wait, of you. One thing at a time. He got it worse than you. Dre Day, and he got <laughs> shot in the head. He got shot in the head when uh, I think when I was in college. I think something okay. like that. And like, he survived. Yeah, he survived. Did you make fun of him? No. Oh, Facts. Okay. No, yeah, yes, I did. Oh, you got shot in the head. No, I did. I used to make fun of the way he talked though. Why? Because he stutters. How? But that's because like, of the see, shot? See, no? no, he started talking okay. better after he got shot. We're so confused. <laughs> I know, I know. But my cousin, he's like, see, this is how he talks. See, son and boy. Son and boy, I heard you got knocked out over there in Japan, boy. And then I was like, I was like, what you talking about? He said, I said, you, I said, cuz you don't, you don't, that's embarrassing. You don't talk like that. He said, yeah, but I heard you was hanging on the roof like this. <laughs> Damn, family, bro. He's yeah, yeah, that's yeah. how he talks. Younger cousin, older cousin. He's older than me. You ever fight him? No, we couldn't fight him growing up because he um he rode the short bus to school, mm. so we couldn't fight him growing up. Like, but he, you looked out for him then. I always looked out for him, See, but he's a nice. snitch, but he was a snitching motherfucker. He well, was like one of those guys. On one but, hand, he's a nice guy. I want to tell everybody he's the best. On the other hand, he's like <laughs> making fun of the guy. Yeah, making <laughs> making fun of like, he he my, big, it's my, my big cousin. He's a snitch. Yeah, he snitch on you. What did he tell on you? Any goddamn thing. You still holding it? Still holding it. Cause, well, he, cause, cause it's just you know childhood shit. Still, no. What he, he do to you? No, no, no. He that was one of the things he did to me. I'm gonna tell you another. I'm gonna tell you one thing he did to me. Okay, my uncle, my uncle was a preacher growing up. Yeah. And and um, his little brother is like six months younger than me. R.I.P. And uh, we was in the office with my uncle one time, and my little brother and his little brother was throwing rocks at the at the building next door to the church, and they bust the window down. And I'm in uh, the office with my uncle and he's having a meeting and stuff like that. And so happened to my mom's twin brothers at the church. And and he he gets mad that they bust the window and he whoops everybody except for their cousin Dre. And I was like, I was like, look, I was in here with Dre. We was in here with my uncle talking, you know, so it was the, you know, it wasn't me. And they they knew who it was, but they grouped me in there. So I got a whooping from my mom's twin brother. <laughs> For nothing, and I and I asked Dre. I said, "Hey, Dre, when I in here with you in this office talking with Uncle Leroy and stuff like that?" He was like, "I don't know." Oh, so yeah. Oh, it's Dre Day. Dre it had Day. to be Dre Day. Dre Day. So ever since then, I, I had a grudge against him. I can't believe someone in your own family would make fun of you for hanging on the ropes. Yeah, man, mm -hmm. that's embarrassing. Like <laughs> that's when, crazy. When you get, that's my first time getting knocked yeah. out, bro. To be it, honest, it was I don't even. I don't even. Yeah, I don't. Wanna, sorry, I, I don't want to make fun of you or say anything bad because I know that that's not. 
I don't know what it feels like to get knocked out, so I shouldn't even make Tell fun them. of you. It, it's like, I thought I was invincible until yeah, that, until that yeah, happened, that's you know? It. Yeah. I feel bad. Man, you know, imagine hanging like, on the you, ropes, if you, Vincente. <laughs> if you watch my fights, get the Barbarina fight, get the Mike Perry fight. Like, I literally thought, man, no, like, nobody's going to knock me out. And everybody was after these fights, you know, telling me, man, you should, you know, work on, on, on your defense and everything. I was like, yeah, you know, I don't need to work on it. My, I got the chin for that. And then I got the lesson, and I'm like, no. Who gave you the lesson? <laughs> yeah. who was, Jeff Neal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Neal. Who, who, yeah. who, who's yeah. one? He, that, that was that fight. Yeah. That, was the, that was the Jeff Neal fight. That was the yeah. lesson. Because yeah. a lot of people before that fight, believe it or not, were saying, hey, if he just works a little bit more on the defense, yeah. hands up a little bit more. Like, yeah. I mean, I was reading some of the comments even, too, from the fight nights. Yeah. And, like, even this, these are people leaving comments before the fight happened. Yeah. You know, you could see the yeah. dates. And it's like, yeah. oh, the guy needs to keep his hands up more. He don't care. <laughs> a little cocky. But, like... <laughs> It's easy for a fight fan, right? Like yeah. us, me, the people watching this, we could say anything we want. But until you're in there and you know what it feels like to get in the face, you can't talk. You can have an opinion, but you can't really talk. I mean, yeah, and I don't know. It's, I think it like, it's even crazy because I go sometimes like after a fight, I'll watch like a whole bunch of YouTube videos and I don't take it personally. Like I like to watch it because sometimes I get good opinions out of like fans that have never even trained. But it makes sense in a way, like if I could take out like the all the hate or whatever and just look at it as an opinion, I'm like, okay, maybe this guy has got a point. And let me let me, you know, work on it and 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 even, you know, go and talk to my coaches and, and see what they say and what they think of, think about it. So sometimes I do get like uh a good opinions of guys that maybe never fought. Yeah. Obviously, like I'm going to bring this in and put it into my reality, into my game, into my techniques. And we cannot throw him in there. Like maybe he knows what he's talking about, but in there he's going to be, you know, in, in trouble because there is a lot of about fighting that, I mean, who never like, even, even like guys that never had a street fight or something like yeah. that, that, that's, that's where the difference is. Like fighting is simple, you know, fighting is simple. When you get to the high levels, yeah, there is strategy and, and game planning and all these techniques and whatnot. But everybody like fighting is fighting. So the you're gonna know you, you you're gonna be chosen. Yeah, like fighting is gonna choose you more than you're gonna choose fighting. Yeah. And and that's how I think that like we 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 get built and we get into this, you know, it's not everybody can go through the training, not everybody can go through the fights and th through all that our body goes through and, and wake up and still go there you know so most of the days I wake up and I don't want to go into the gym but I know I got to go to because my my you know the other guy's going and he's gonna try to take my head off so I gotta be ready to go and take his head off so it's not mine you know so it's yeah. it's crazy yeah Rampage you you always and we I always go back and forth with him that's my dog right here so, and then everybody watching this knows this guy. The 10 years I've known this guy probably, right? One of, one of my good friends, consider him family. But you always talk about, in a good way, you hate training. You yeah. hated training. Yeah. And you and 10 other people from your generation of fighting say the same thing. Hate training. <laughs> and now I hear a lot of younger generation, like the generation after you, say the same thing. I hate, sometimes I wake up, I hate training, right? And everybody says that, but they never say, I hate fighting. They just say, I hate training. What is the biggest difference? Like, what I, I, I am. For me, for me, training is where I, where I get all my injuries. And even if I'm hurt, like, say I'm training for a fight, even if I have like a little, you know, something like a little injury, like you say you, you hurt your elbow or you hurt something, you still got to go and train. Mm. And for me, it's, it's, it's mental. I got to train through it. And, and, and it's, and the type of mind I have, like, little small things piss me off. And just piss, like like something that be small to somebody else, but I have to go and train through it. Like say say for instance, if I want to do push ups, one day then my wrists are hurt. I'm like, man, I just want to do push ups. I want to do jump squats. My my knee are hurt. But the but the, the day before, I don't want to do it. My wrists don't hurt. It's just stuff like that. It's just like little small things. And, yeah. And training just sucks. Like, and I I used to train really hard for my fights, and I I used to go all out. I used to train really hard, three times a day. It sucks. It's, yeah. it's not fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because a lot of people would look at like, for example, I would say Rampage has probably the best take on like GSP or like a Usman from your point of view, and then like GSP Usman from your point of view. Like for welterweights, for example, like the greatest one seventy pound of all time based off training technique, the way they fought. 
would you consider Usman the greatest welterweight of all time or GSP the greatest welterweight of all time? I, I love I love Usman. You know what I'm saying? I met him even before I, I knew who he was out there fighting, but you know, it was just some. It was just something different about GSP. I, I, you would have to just go with GSP just because, just because of the fact that he had a whole country behind him. He got the whole country of Canada behind him, mm -hmm. and I I saw GSP from his first fight in, in the UFC, and and then when he lost to Matt, and then he came back. He learned from his mistake. He came back, and he he developed his craft, and he became back and become one of the greats. So. You know what I'm saying? I have to give that to to, to um, GSP without being yeah. biased. What about you? Ah uh, man, I I would I think so too. Like I agree with with Rampage, and yeah. for me, it's like it's almost hard. Like I think the way the UFC does with the Hall of Fame, like they have like the the modern and then the guys from the past. Mm -hmm. I think you have to draw that line because, like, definitely. From the from from nowadays, Usman is is definitely like a beast. You know, one of the best, uh, not only welterweights, one of the best champions. You know, out there. But then, if you go and and look back in the days, what what GSP was doing in the welterweight division is is like it's crazy. You know, so and and you can't compare because you can't really like see how it would be. Like it was two different moments. You know, nobody that was competing back then is competing. Mm -hmm. now so it's it's totally different moments and that's why for me like if you're gonna do it like overall all time it's gonna it's gotta be gsp yeah yeah, yeah. But i think yeah. Usman would kick his ass right now though yeah but i but i don't know what it would be like both at their prime oh uh, both at their that prime would be crazy that would be a crazy fight yeah that'd be crazy we can only see that on the video game yeah that, yeah, that's yeah, something yeah, they, would, yeah they would have to do like on a <laughs> ufc ai yeah. the ufc ai fight yeah. leon edwards title reign thus far is like you know pretty unique what do you think of him and and what do you think's next for the title shot you know what do you think what do you think of that whole situation going on right now with him Bilal and everything else I think I think the next fight should be Bilal uh for many reasons one I mean I think the streak Bilal is in and they have like that that first match that was weird mm -hmm. out there so I definitely think that would be uh the fight that makes more sense mm -hmm. in a sport sportive point of view you know the second reason I think it's good is because I think that's a good opportunity for me as well. You know, if Bilal gets that that title, I get my my rematch. You know, the, our third fight. I've beat him once. He beat me once. Now we got to go for that third one for the title fight. So it's interesting for me as well. I think it's a it's a good fight. And as, as we wrap up here, obviously to kind of hear from you and let people kind of see you. I think a lot of people love to hear from fighters sometimes because nowadays they don't get. Too much, too much uh, talking time. There's so many fights going on. There's a fight every other weekend. No one ever really knows what's going on. I mean, it's better than ever. It's just very, very fast now, very rapid. Like, it's very hard for fighters in the UFC to really stand out and become superstars because there's just so much turnover. You know, back in the day when, when Rampage fought, the whole city shut down for a week. You know, he's fighting. You know, now it's like, well, there'll be another one next week. Don't worry about it, you know? What do we what do we think about this, you know, this upcoming fight? You know, you have a big fight coming up. They just announced it. Obviously, it's gonna be phenomenal. It's against a good, good, talented fighter. It's not against a, a walkthrough bum, you know? What do you think about this going into it? I mean, I think it's awesome, you know. Uh even when I look back at it, you know, uh I was supposed to fight Ian. It didn't work out, but I was blessed with an even more amazing fight, you know, a main event in New Jersey, you know, the the state I was born in. I still have my dad lives there and uncles, my grandfather. So I have family over there and I'm fighting, you know, in the main event uh, against Sean Brady, who is a dangerous, you know, guy that, that has a great, not only he has like uh, a name, like he people are, are, are going to root for him, are going to have his back, but he has like the 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 resume to back it up as well you know so it's definitely a guy and he's above me in the in the rankings so it's a fight that moves me up you know uh so definitely i'm excited you know it's for me it's a big fight a fight that's gonna put me back into that top five mix yeah. and and be able soon to maybe get a title fight eventually yeah his only loss is to Bilal, a guy you fought twice yeah so do yeah. you think you have this guy's kind of number you feel like you have an edge on him or no i i, I mean you know I never try to compare myself. Like, I don't think it's math. Like, oh, I beat this guy, so this guy beat the other guy. I'm going to beat him. I, I look every fight as a new fight. And and when I do watch, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of Sean Brady fights. I even think it's, you know, uh, a, a guy that is fun to watch in, in some of his fights. And 
watching the last one. He's skilled, you know, he, he's got good wrestling, good ground game. But then again, I'm training with amazing wrestlers. I got amazing submission skills and I'm a striker. So, you know, I, I think that I have what it takes to get to beat him in what he does best. Plus, I can beat him in, in what I do best, which is striking. So mm -hmm. I definitely think it's a great fight. I got the tools to beat him. Not going to be an easy fight, but yeah. but it's a fight that I'm ready for. Have you been working on your defense? Yes, I've been working. Hey, yeah. hey, after that, you know, <laughs> dude, there's no way I cannot be working on my defense. You keep your hands up. Yeah, yeah. Hands up, head movement, uh, footwork, everything, everything, all kinds of defense. Got bro, all written I, down. Bro, yeah, when yeah, I watch yeah, fights yeah, yeah. And, I, and I see the guys fighting and their hands real low, I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, your hands can be low, but when you the closer you get to your opponent, you should bring your hands up. My, my whole fight career, I'm like, here, yeah, I'm like, here. Yeah, I, like, yeah. I like defense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Defense is, like always Gracie, defense is your best offense. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I love it. Before we let you go, I want to know your top three favorite fighters of all time. Ah, man. Vitor Belfort. Wow. I got it. You're not going to like a thing. Shogun. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shogun. No, he's the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shogun, like Shogun for me, like my first two fights, I fought with that bad boy trunks. Oh, just yeah. Just because of I Shogun, remember, you yeah, know? I remember that. Yeah, I like, yeah, I like yeah, those shorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then the third one, uh, He's a guy that I became a fan of, uh, mo like after I was in the UFC and is is Noguera, Big Nog. Oh, wow. Big Nog, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I was never like, I always admired him a lot, but I wasn't like super fan of, of his style because he was more of a jiu-jitsu guy. But I still respected his story. But then when, once I met him personally and I hang, like I spent a lot of time with him because of the UFC, uh, working in Brazil, going to different countries in South America, and he is an amazing person you yeah. know a, a guy that really cares about us fighters and 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 is always checking on me always you know uh I, yeah. teaching me a lot of things so i do like i gotta put him in that list as yeah well. he's a great he's yeah. a great guy man all, all great fights yeah, so, all great fight. yeah. yeah I, I don't get offended by the guys that kick my ass while i fought that people look up to shogun <laughs> shogun is is a yeah. he's a great he's a great fighter yeah. And his brother and his brother Ninja, you know what I'm saying? Gotta yeah. gotta respect, gotta show respect to them. I always wanted a rematch with Shogun because I, I fought him injured. Yeah. And it's just, you know, one of those fights. Yeah. But I don't I like him as a as a guy and yeah. I'm a fan of him. He's a great fighter. I thought the rematch was gonna happen in the UFC. Yeah, I, I was, never yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to. That would have been amazing. Would, I think everybody great. wanted to see that. Yeah, yeah we too old now, huh? No. I think why you say it like that? I'm just saying like, he's younger than me though. Yeah. No, but I think he retired. I, but why did he, why did he retire? I don't know. I think injuries. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He I said know. something. He said something on his Instagram in Portuguese, and I think it was something about me and him fighting. But I couldn't read Portuguese, and it wouldn't translate. So yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, we, I just saw that this morning that Fedor is going to fight Mike Tyson. Oh yeah, in that's a boxing crazy fight, fight. That's in crazy Dubai, fight. in Saudi Arabia. Mike Tyson <laughs> that's versus Fedor. Crazy. Yeah, I'm not kidding you. Why are you getting mad? <laughs> Why are you getting mad? What's wrong? Mike Tyson based with Fedor. Yeah. Why you say it like that? <laughs> I want to rematch Fedor too. And say, I want to fight Mike Tyson. Do you want to fight Fedor <laughs> in a boxing fight? Yeah, I fight Fedor. I fight Fedor in anything. Wow. You don't care? I don't give a f I don't care. No, you can say it. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. You think you could put the pause on Fedor? Man, yeah. I like that. So you want the rematch? I want the rematch. Wow, I, I owe like Fedor. That. I owe Fedor a rematch because that wasn't me that was fighting him. That wasn't me. I think Fedor owes it to you too because he gonna get that win on you. He got to get you at your best. He can't just get you at at, yeah. at, at a time where I think you were not your best. But that's that's huge. Him, and, and I don't I don't see him fighting. It's, it's, Mike. it's in negotiations right now. Mike Tyson. When, when we when we talked to him last time, he was saying like his wife don't let don't want him. Hey, I think they're gonna get so much money over there that it doesn't even. Middle matter. East is going crazy right now. I'm yeah. wait. I'm waiting right now for a contract from from Guitar. For, for who? For Shannon Briggs. Oh, so it's going down. Yeah, they. Hey, you know he's gonna fight Shannon Briggs in a boxing fight. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Nice. They they want to do a yeah. car uh, MMA Crazy. Yeah. guys versus boxers. Okay. Oh wow, that's good. That's real good. You think you could fight Mike Tyson in a boxing fight? Yeah, 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 yeah. I really? Think, I think I can. Talk. I think with my coach with with with, with um, Bobby Rimmer in my corner training me, I think I can take on any boxer out there. Wow. Bob, hey, before we go, Bobby Rimmer was your coach through your whole career, right? No, no. But he started training like 14 years ago. No, I, I, I had I had, I had a, a couple other boxing coaches before him, like maybe like two other boxing coaches before Bobby Rimmer. Yeah. And you, you only have one striking coach, right? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I trained mom. in Brazil. Yeah, my mom, my mom is my first striking coach. <laughs> That's true. And and then like in Brazil, I big part of my career was in Brazil. Okay. So I had a, a striking coach over there, Daniel Evangelista. But then since 2015, 2014, I've trained with Henry the you whole know, time. The whole time God, until just now. Henry's building warriors over yeah, there. Henry's a beast. Yeah. He's just building warriors, Henry. That is unreal to me. And and he's got like. I think a hundred fights himself, kickboxing. Man. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's crazy because he's got like the two sides of you know he he lived it, and he 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 can teach it. Yeah. And that's that's hard to. That's find. rare. That's yeah. rare in the UFC to yeah. have to have your. I mean, you have the Randy Couture's and these guys, but you also have some of the best coaches in the world, like Eric Nixick at, at Extreme Couture. Yeah. Eric, like Eric, Eric didn't really fight. You know, yeah, he's like yeah, football yeah. training, conditioning, and learn from Randy. But he's so. He's so strategical, like he's so scientific with how he studies fights, how he yeah, studies yeah. technique and training that it allows him to be the greatest coach in the world. He could go do ba boxing yeah. with Francis Agano, Sean Strickland with champs, Aljo. So I, it is rare to see a coach that actually actually fought in that many fights. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy because yeah. I don't think I could. I don't think I would ever coach anybody because I think about it sometimes. Like I don't know why I did the stuff I did in my fights. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because my coach told me I can't see myself out here coaching somebody and you I don't could. have the patience. No. You when no. you're out here, you saw me yesterday sparring, you were all over it. You're saying, no. get away from the weights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, stuff like that, like common mm -hmm. sense stuff, but I, break, break it down to other fighters and stuff like that. It's weird, like you and I can watch the same fight and I'd be looking at something totally different than 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 people. I think coaches, they're, they're very... They're they're very gifted individuals. They can look at fights and look at stuff that that is true. Yeah, because you have to you have to not just break down your fighter, but you have to figure out what's best for your fighter versus the guy you're watching. It's like two two fights at the same time. And and how to fight that guy with the skills of your fighter? Because like, like really many times I, I look at guys and like I can see a way to beat him, but with my skills, I don't know what your skills are. Yeah, you know? and yeah. even though I'm training you, I'm like. How, that's what I think coaches do really well. Yeah. Like they know how to, they have five different or whatever, 10 different athletes and they can game plan like and, and, yeah. and train each guy for each fight. That's it's, so crazy. Because yeah. Henry's got a hundred plus fighters at that gym now. That's unreal. And but before we let you go, we're done here. I appreciate it. This was a phenomenal podcast. I mean, it's cool to actually hear from you and talk. I know we've been hitting each other up and it's cool to get these guys in the studio. I hope the, the fans love this and we're really trying to give them a good show behind the scenes of what these guys are like because I think that's what the MMA community really needs. I want to know uh, over your years at Killcliffe and Sanford and like Zillions, who's the greatest fighter you ever trained with? Because I know you also got to train with Jackson, who's probably one of the best in the world right now, but he's in PFL. He's in, yeah, he's in, yeah. you know, Bellator. Hopefully it comes to the UFC soon, but who's the best fighter you ever trained with? Man, that's that's a hard one. I know that's, you're gonna, yeah. gonna get him in trouble with his. <laughs> with his I, I want to hear one, man. I'm just I'm just gonna say this: uh, a guy that is already you know not not completely retired, but retired at least from the UFC, Vitor Belfort. You know, I got to train a lot with him. I still learn a lot from him. You know, he goes once in a while at the gym and, and kind of, you know, uh, coaches us a little bit about warming up and, and even our sparring days. So I'm going to say Vitor Belfort, you know, just because, you know, he, the talent, the skills, I got to train with him still when he was competing. Yeah. And, and now I get to, you know, get all the knowledge and yeah. learn from him. So. And That's crazy. Yeah, Vitor yeah, is yeah, a legend. Yeah. Tell, tell Vitor yeah. to unblock me on Instagram. <laughs> okay. <laughs> him and Vitor blocked each other. Now no one could yeah. tag each other in Jackson podcast okay. post. Okay. No, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't block him though. You guys mad at each other? <laughs> no, I didn't block you him. Want to box him or something? I always been a fan of Vitor. Yeah. I always yeah, I been love a fan. Vitor. And when we sat down here and stuff like that, I learned so much from him. He's such a legend. Dude. Yeah, he's yeah. a great guy. And he's so passionate about fighting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he yeah. still gets in the mix over there. Or no, he still gets in sparring. I sessions? mean, some sometimes he will. Yeah, when really? he has when he has a fight or something, because now he's doing boxing and all that. He puts so it he on goes, people in the gym. Yeah, he goes really. Those are spars. Yeah, like maybe I don't know. Like four months ago, we were sparring a lot. Me, him, and Gregory. Oh wow, Gregory Robocop. Yeah. Yes, Robocop? Man. Yeah, Robocop. You've seen him fight? <laughs> they got Robo they trade with Robocop? I'm a big fan of him. <laughs> Drop it. I love Robocop. <laughs> Robocop. <laughs> He's talking about the movie, Robocop. <laughs> 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 talking about it's, Robocop. It's, it's, it's not it, it's the, the fighter Robocop. Gregory. Check him out. But that's, that's, 185. No, not the movie. Oh, yeah, not the no, movie guy. No. The fighter Robocop. He was in the A team. He's a beast. So he's a yeah, big movie yeah, guy. Oh, yeah. no, my bad. Yeah. Okay. I thought you okay. was training with Robocop. No, no, no. I'm a big fan of that. Guy. How Robocop? Drop it. Drop it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, but man. No, so he was in the gym. Me. He put the, the hands on him. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were training. We were helping him for his fight. I, I don't remember who, who he fought. Roy Jones or someone? I don't remember. I don't know. He was about to fight someone, was. yeah. Yeah, but he, but I think he did fight and he won. Evander yeah, Holyfield? Uh, that was after that. Oh, okay. I don't remember who it yeah. was. But but he was Vitor is in the gym still putting hands on people. Yeah, wow, oh, that's uh, what, uh, Vitor should should have went to jail for what he did to Evander Holyfield. <laughs> that, Why that you was, say that? that? You know what? That, <laughs> but that, but Evander Holyfield signed the contract. Listen, uh, I understand that, know? but Fan, Evander Holyfield <laughs> like he took that fight on short notice. You can tell he needed <laughs> whoever, some money. Whoever talked to Holyfield should have gone to jail. Yeah, they put him in a trap. But Vitor <laughs> beat the shit out of fucking Holyfield. <laughs> And like, come on, Vitor, you could have took it easy on him. Come on. I know, you know, you show it what you can do, but yeah. God damn. <laughs> yeah, it's it, hard. it is true. It's hard. Yeah. It is but, true. But you can never we'll see, underestimate. We'll see a lot more. Imagine, yeah. imagine yeah. if he took it easy and then Holyfield throws it. Because that's yeah. the last thing. I think the last thing the yeah. fighter loses is the hand. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. he mm-hmm. can lose his chin, his speed. He's everything, but the power on the hand, that's the last thing to go. So yeah. you can never underestimate I, that. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting soft in my older age. <laughs> if that was me, I would go in there and, and I would have, you know, been wary yeah. too. But then I saw, oh, shit, this motherfucker, like 60 years old, he almost shit on himself. I would have, I would have like. <laughs> Bro, keep that same energy when you find Shannon Briggs. Oh, fuck Shannon. <laughs> okay, he yes. He talked too much. Yes. No, no, he talked too much. So keep that same energy. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we, I want war. We yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. be no, coming no, in no, with no. any of this soft no, no, girl no, era. No, no, no. You want the soft girl era, you no. go do this with your no, girl Holy in Cuba or something. But that's Holyfield, though. Holyfield is a legend. Yeah, don't, no damn don't legend. keep this mentality. Yo, don't keep this mentality. <laughs> Catch yourself over there. Yeah. Holyfield is a legend, though. Yeah, yeah that is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I appreciate you coming. It's a phenomenal time to have you in here. I hope the fans really got to, to learn from you and hear from you, and we're excited to watch you fight, you know? Been a big fan. We're, we love watching your fights. We love watching everything that's going down with the UFC right now, and like I said, I think it's going to be the biggest sport in the world the next couple of years. It's a phenomenal growth, and I think you're going to be at the height of it. So, Thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate see, it. I see I the title running in, in your future real quick here. Thank yeah. you, man. No, I really appreciate this because it's a platform to really show the fans like what we are, especially for a guy like me. Like, I'm not the trash talker. I'm not going to be the trash talker. So, you know, you guys really show who I am and just just share me, you know, to the mm-hmm. fans. And I, I really appreciate that. You got I got a YouTube channel now. So if the fans want to check What's it out. Yeah. So called? just Vicente Luque, awesome. yeah, my name, and find Make it sure out there. Make sure you post yeah. on there. Yeah, I am Real posting. Short, I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm posting, yeah, and and, and putting, like, uh, cool cool videos about my, my training camps. And nice. Also, I love cars, so I'm putting a lot about things about cars because nice. it's something I like. So just sharing it with the fans, whatever I do, besides fighting, Good. you know. Yeah. yeah. Anything yeah, else yeah, you yeah. want to shout out? Like, your, say hello to your mom and yeah. hello to my mom, to my wife, to my son, and yeah, his everybody. loyal wife who he's only yes. been with his wife. Yeah, yeah. Loyal I didn't, way. I didn't know anything yeah. about he's had a wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, I assumed that because you know I wasn't really married throughout my whole career. I, I got, I was married for one year, one year, the whole time I've been fighting, one motherfucking year. So I just assumed like, oh, we fighters, we don't get married, we just fight. <laughs> Listen, we love you, Rampage. Don't worry. And we hope that you find a wife soon in in, in your future. I'll take ten more years. I'm going to yeah. be single for 10 more years. Oh, then I'm going to go to like uh, Vietnam or <laughs> Colombia and get me a young wife. Loco. <laughs> wife. Loco. Can you book him a one-way flight to Shibuya, please? <laughs> Shibuya. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm Berto Gidio. This is the Jackson Podcast. Vincente Luque, the one and only, the greatest to ever do it. Ten toes down, Rampage Jackson. We out. We out.